For, to be clear, um, we have solved some equations that contained occasional, you know, fractions. So it's not like we haven't gone down this road at all. But the next, I would say probably solid four days or five days of this class, all we're going to do is solve equations that have fractions in sometimes multiple locations. Um, the, the way I see it is they, they kind of hit in three levels. We're going to hit the first two levels today, which I think, I hope, you don't find too much trouble with. Um, the next level, though, that we see, which will probably be Monday, because tomorrow is the weird homecoming day with the short classes and all that stuff. So uh, but I think Monday will hit the harder lesson where the fractions in multiple places, and that's where it starts to get a little bit tricky. So um, but anyways, equations with fractions is not the kind of thing we can just do in a day and say, boom, here you go, because uh, it's just it's not realistic to do that. So today's are all going to look like one of two types. And so I have the lesson broken into like type A and type B, and they're kind of repetitive once you get the gist. So really, again, let's let's work really hard on learning the process. Remember, no gold stars for answering questions in your head and going, oh, I think X is eight. Like, no, nah, it's not what we're doing here. We're learning a process. And that process, you're going to hear me say this a lot, is fraction killing. It's a thing. Um, and I think that most most math teachers, well, most algebra teachers subscribe to this idea that no one likes fractions. Right. And I'll say that always openly, candidly, that I'm not going to lie to you and say, oh, you have to love fractions. No, you hate them. Hate them all you want. But you do have to learn to peacefully coexist with them. And it might be ironic to say that and then tell you to kill them. I'm not trying to send a mixed message. But the idea is when I see fractions in an equation, yes, I might go, oh, but then I go, oh, I know what to do. Right. And so it's OK to dislike them, um, but you're, you need to be empowered to, to work with them. So. Anyways, the first type of equations that we're going to see with fractions are these first three examples, uh, and they're all going to look like this. And by the way, your assignment will be on Delta Math today. So for those of you that have not followed that link in Canvas and gotten signed up, that's going to need to be priority one, because you literally cannot do the assignment until you get your Delta Math connected. So I hope you all did that. So scattered throughout the assignment, you're going to see basically two types of problems and Delta math will mix them. So it's not like you're going to do 10 of these and then 10 of the others, you know, it, who knows, it's luck of the draw. Um, so one type of problems is always going to look like this. And so anyone have any thoughts as to how we could solve it? Yeah, uh, Jackson? You can, and that's something that I'm totally open to you doing. The only issue I have with that, and honestly, there's going to come a time on Monday where we can't avoid that. What you said is going to probably have to be what we do. But in a case like this, I'd rather not distribute the fraction. And the only reason for that is because if I distribute the fraction to here, I get a multiplication problem that doesn't play nice. And I try to avoid those instances whenever I can. I'd always rather not have to do a half times three. What's the problem with a half times three? Yeah, it's a decimal or a fraction. It doesn't come out nice. And I'm just always going to try to steer the ship so that we can avoid not nice numbers. I, I'm, I'm looking always for the path of least resistance. So what Jackson said is not wrong. You could distribute the one half, but I have a better idea. And I'd like to get rid of the fraction before it has a chance to spread its filth. Basically, if I can take a fraction and eliminate it from the scene entirely, then he never has a chance to turn other numbers into bad numbers, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to put parentheses around the whole equation. They are still parentheses. You can call them brackets. They're just square parentheses. Just, I mean, you can call them whatever you want. Does anyone know why I elected to use square parentheses, Gage? Yeah, right. It's just a math thing. Like it looks weird when you put round parentheses immediately adjacent to round parentheses. They start to look like the little 
how many like your Wi-Fi signal, you know, that little how the you know what I'm talking about? Uh, and I, I just choose math people choose not to do that. For the most part, we don't like round next to round. So when we find ourselves with parentheses and we apply more, if they were square, we'd use round. If they're round, we'll use square. It's not a big deal. But that's why I chose those. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply just by the bottom of the fraction that I want to kill. Fractions are not fractions if they don't have bottoms, by definition. So I'm going to take this whole equation and I'm going to multiply it by 2. Got that? Now, how many places do you think that the 2, and you might answer this wrong, and that's okay, but how many places do you think the 2 hits when it multiplies in? Like, how many different things do you think it hits? Three, four, two. Interestingly enough, the two has to multiply here. That's probably not very interesting. And the two has to multiply here. But the two will not multiply into here. Does anybody know why? This is hard for me to explain. So try your best to see if this will make sense. <clears throat> Everything in this yellow box that I'm drawing, and you don't have to draw this box, but I just want to teach you something. Everything in that yellow box is one, what we call a term. In math, a term is a chunk of stuff that's connected by multiplication. And the way I see it, what's in the yellow box is one half times something. And I don't really care what the something is, but by definition, if it's a half times something, then it's just one term. And terms are only allowed to be multiplied one time. And that's why the two will multiply by the one half and then say, my work is done here. Another analogy, or, or a better analogy perhaps, if that didn't make any sense, is I sometimes think of the one half as a bouncer. So picture this like a bodyguard and the one half is standing at the front door. And one half is the, the bodyguard who's protecting this really fancy high dollar client whose name is 3x plus four. The way this works is when the two comes in and attacks, it collides with the bodyguard. They do battle, cancel each other out, but the 3x plus four is unaware of what happened. Does that make any sense at all? So when we distribute like this, Things that are in parentheses are unaffected. We only multiply our fraction killer by the bodyguard in front. So having said that, when I do my first distribution, what's two times four? Eight. Eight. And what is two times, so follow the yellow arrow, what is two times a half? It is one. Because the twos cancel, don't they? That's the whole dang point. Why would we be doing this if the twos didn't cancel? So when the twos cancel out, all we're left with is one. Now, I'm going to write this, but I'm probably never going to write this again. Because in a moment, I'm going to erase something that I just wrote. Let me ask you this. What's the purpose of that one? What purpose does he serve when he multiplies by the things in parentheses? None. He literally does nothing. He serves no purpose. For that reason, when I fraction kill like this, and the one is what's left on the top of the fraction, from this point on, I will not put it. And I would encourage you to not put it as well. There will be problems coming up, like the next two, where that will not be the case. But if the leftover is a one, don't need it. And then immediately with the fraction out of the way, no more, I don't know what to do. What is our first step now? Subtract four from both sides. And then we're gonna divide, oh, excuse me, I need to cancel drop, drop, my apologies. So I need to bring down my three X and my equals. What's eight minus four? Four, and I do want you now, we're embarking on a new journey here to start feeling like, okay, I'm not gonna get answers all the time that are five and zero and negative two. Right away, my flag goes up and I go, mm -mm, I'm going to divide both sides by three. And when I do, I know that my math teacher and all math teachers don't want some decimal. What can you tell me about four thirds? Can I reduce it? No. So the answer is four thirds.
do not convert it to a mixed number. No one is interested in one and one third and certainly do not make it into some ugly decimal. Got it? Box it up. So that's one flavor of fraction equations. Let's do the next one. So for this one, we're going to do 13 equals three quarters of the quantity 5x plus 8. Our mission is to look at that fraction and say, I'd like to remove your fractionness. So uh, who's making him a fraction? The four. I'm not interested in the three. But the four is like, if I could get rid of you, then you're no longer a fraction. I remove all of your power over me psychologically. So I'm going to apply some monster brackets here. I'm sorry, what'd you say, Cruz? Yes. So we're going to multiply by four. I'm not interested in multiplying by the reciprocal. It's going to cause some issues down the road because now we're going to have fractions that might pop up too soon. And then we have to work with them. I'd rather just take, take it out of play completely. So if I multiply by four, the four multiplies here. What do we get? 52. And then the four multiplies, follow the yellow arrow, here. What do we get? You get three. And unlike that last problem, we don't get 12 because the fours kill each other. The whole point was that those fours no longer exist. So the number 12 should never enter your mind. Four never gets a chance to multiply by three. And unlike the last problem, I can't just not put this. The three, unlike a one, is very important. He's got a job to do. One, don't need it. Three, oh yeah. and from here, we're back, I think, to the old familiar. What should we do? I would distribute. And the reason for that is because 52 can't divide by 3. That's going to be 17 and a third. And you're like, oh, no way. No way. If 52 could divide by 3, I would divide by 3, like we learned in the last unit. Uh, but now it's not going to work for me. So I'm going to distribute. I want to avoid fractions until the last second. So when I distribute my 3 right here and right here, what do I get? Nice job, 15x plus 24. And again, now you should be like well in your comfort zone at this point. What's the next step? Subtract 24 from both sides. You see how we know that there's probably going to be a fraction coming down the pike, but we don't have to acknowledge it until the very end when it can't hurt us. That's the plan. So I'm going to drop my 15x. I'm going to drop my equals. What's 52 minus 24? 28. By the way, I wanted to say this. Uh, it's okay if you guys use calculators, okay? I really, I don't want you using them all the time. I hate that, but I also accept the fact that for some of you, typing things into a calculator might be the difference on a test between an A and a C. So I don't want you to struggle in class just because you struggle with basics. I'd like you, I'd love it if you learn your basics, uh, but don't feel bad if you use a calculator. I won't make fun of you. No one will, I promise. I might give you a little grief, like you know, but never, never to hurt. So next step. Divide by 15, because that 15 is attached to the X by times and only divide can kill times, right? I don't know that I can. Let's do our cancel, drop, drop first, and then let's cross that bridge. Cancel, drop, drop, X equals. Now let's talk math. First off, 28 cannot be divided by 15. We agree on that. Can 28 and 15 both be reduced by anything? Three doesn't go into 28. 28 has lots of factors. One, two, four, seven, 14, 28. It's got a ton. The trouble is none of them are the same as the factors of 15. One, three, five, 15. For that reason, our answer is 28 fifteenths. It is what it is. Let's do one more of this flavor and then we'll move on. Bless you. Times three. Bless you times three. And then we'll move on to the second flavor. So. And I'm showing you the format of these exactly like they'll appear in your assignment on Delta. So uh, these, the problems are always going to look like this. The number will be on the left and all the fancy stuff will be on the right. So just so you know. Oh, so you ought to get it by now, I think. What are we gonna what are we gonna do? 
yeah, we're going to monster bracket the whole equation. Okay, I like to call those monster brackets because they feel like bigger, like they got a bigger purpose, right? And we're going to multiply only by the three. And how many places will that three multiply? Yeah, just the seven in the fraction. Remember, he never gets a chance to penetrate into the parentheses. So when the seven and the three multiplies here, we get yes. And when the three multiplies here, what do we get? Two. Good job. Again, if you even thought of the number six, you're not listening. The purpose is that the three and the two never have to multiply because the three gets taken out. Next step, we should distribute again because the 21 and the two are not compatible. If it was 20, I'd divide by two, but I'm gonna distribute. Avoid fractions until the last second. So we get 21 equals what? Next step, add eight to both sides, very good. Drop 2x, drop equals, what's 21 plus 8? 29 cannot be divided by 2, so what is our answer? Beautiful. 29 tooths, I like that. Yeah, I sometimes say that too. He was giving me trouble, so I knocked out all 29 tooths. Uh, yeah, I don't mind. Uh, 29 halves would be the correct way to say that, or 29 over 2, or 29 seconds if you're feeling crazy. But good job. All right, any questions on type A? Great, let's head on then, uh, make kind of a different section for your notes here, we'll draw like a line or something. Let's get on to the second flavor. Your second flavor of problems look like this. Bless you. Oops, sorry, that's supposed to be a nine. Apologies, fix that. What do you notice right away separates this from the last? I mean, obviously they look completely different, but what do you see? Like, what are you seeing? Sure, I agree. What else do you notice? What else? The fractions don't match. And that's really important. All of your observations were good, but my problem now is like, oh no, I have to kill two fractions. So we are still going to go with the thinking of let's monster bracket this up. And this, you could use round parentheses this time because we don't have any that would collide. I'm just sticking with the square because why not? No one cares, by the way. Um, so what we need now is a little fancy thing called a least common denominator. Because if I'm going to kill two fractions at the same time, if I multiply by nine, okay, I kill one of the fractions, but not the other. If I multiply by five, same thing. What one number could effectively cancel or kill them both? 45. Good job. So I'm going to teach you a little method here today. Um, I sometimes call it the hook. You call it whatever you want. The way this is going to work is watch out now. If you're going to get lost, it's going to happen right now. So wake up. Take a breath. Smack yourself in the head. Do something. Here it comes. Learn it right now. And we never have to talk about this again. When the 45 does its multiplication, when it first multiplies to right here, follow the yellow arrow, here's the way this goes. The 45 that's up high cancel or reduces with the five down low. And what is 45 reduced by five? Nine. So here's what your next step is going to look like. You're going to have nine times X plus two. Notice that the fraction no longer exists. We killed it. Yes, it's that easy. Can you believe it? And then the 45, follow the green arrow now. The 45 is going to multiply over to here. And again, I got to know my times tables, right? What is 45 reduced to a 9? 5. So I'm going to take this plus sign, and I'm going to copy it down. And then the leftover, the 45 and the 9, have a leftover of 5. So I'm going to take that 5 and I'm gonna to have to multiply it by the two X minus seven. But we're not done yet. Oftentimes people get so excited that they're like, I did it, I did it, I killed the fractions. And then they go like this. And I go, oh, 
you did a good job, but you didn't really finish. The trouble is that three that's parked on the other side, he's not protected in parentheses. When you commit to multiplying an equation, you say, I'm going in full send. This is big. I have to multiply everybody in that equation that is not protected. Therefore, the 45 also has to multiply all the way across to the three. Sorry. And what's 45 times three? 135. So do not forget to finish the task. And as is the case with fraction equations, every time, once you kill a fraction, you'll always find yourself back someplace where you've been before. We know what to do. We distribute, we combine like terms, blah, blah, blah. So let's finish it from here. Let's do our double distribution. We're going to get 9x plus 18 plus 10x minus 35 equals 130. What do we do next? Combine like terms. Boy, it just ripped my heart out when I was grading the quiz and I saw someone like subtract 9x from both sides. I'm like, oh my God, I'm the worst teacher ever. Combine like terms. Look only at the left side and do all of the math that you can. How many x's do we get? We sure do. And I see more like terms. I'm like, hey, I got 18 minus 35. What's that make? got to be negative first of all so i'm putting a minus negative 17 is correct next step add 17 to both sides we're right back in our comfort zone what's 135 plus 17 152 last step Divide away that 19, x equals, what is it? it? I don't know what you're saying. I can't hear you because the air conditioner ran. I think you might be mumbling. It's eight, right? 152 can be divided by 19. If it wouldn't have been able to, I would have left it as a fraction and tried to reduce it, but it actually comes out to a nice pretty number in this case. Still good? Oh. Right, let's go round two. Same flavor. X plus four over three plus X plus one over two equals X plus two. How many places will our fraction killer have to multiply? Well, that is not an acceptable answer. I really need a real answer. How many places will you have to multiply? Four is correct. Four. Everyone is exposed. So when the fraction killer says, I'm going in, he's going to multiply by the first fraction, second fraction, all the way across to the X, all the way across to the two. Everyone that's out in the open gets smacked. So let's talk. Who is it? Who's the fraction killer? Six is our guy. So encompass the entire equation with some parentheses of your choosing. And let's say our going in, we're multiplying by six. Here we go. When six collides with the first fraction, the six, the fraction killer, and the three on the bottom reduce to what? So we should have a two that it needs to multiply by whatever was on the top. And then we're going to copy down this plus sign right here, and we're going to do it again. Second verse, same as the first. When the fraction killer reduces with the bottom of the fraction, six and two reduce to three. And then we multiply by what's left over. And again, oftentimes people pat themselves on the butt. They go, I did, I did great. I did, I did it. And then they forget, oh, I got to multiply to the other side too. What's going to be on the other side? Six X plus 12. Because that six is coming in Coming in hot, zoop, zoop, hits everybody on the left side, hits those. Right side, right? And again, you go, I've been here. I know what to do. So let's distribute. We get, uh, what is this? 2x plus 8 plus 3x plus 3 equals 6x plus 12. Combine those like terms. I got some x's on the left. How many x's? What's my constant term? 11, good job. And now I'm back to the old ho-hum standard equation. 
Move the variables to one side, move the numbers to the other side, divide when necessary. Who should move, 5x or 6x? Totally move that 5x. And that means we're going to subtract him from both sides. And we're going to cancel drop, drop, drop your 11. What is 6x minus 5x? Uh-huh. <clears throat> Last step? Yeah, and normally this wouldn't be the last step. Normally we would have to divide, but this is one of those fortunate ones. You saw a couple of them on your quiz where the X's blend together to make one, if you know what you're doing, right? Those of you that are stubborn got negative one and you get what you get. But if you always move the smaller X, then sometimes you get lucky. You get one X and you're like, hey, jackpot. Cancel those out. X equals negative one. I have one more, okay, and this, um, I wish I didn't have to put you through another because I know you're probably done with me, but one more. I tried to cover all the different flavors and this is the last flavor, so I'm gonna box this up. It's, I mean, it's cut from the same cloth as the, the previous two. It's gonna look kind of the same. I just, I'm trying to think about what will they see and you will see problems that also look like this. And again, I, I don't mean to ask you questions that might be obvious, but what do you notice has changed? They're all fractions this time. Holy Toledo. So this is just fraction killing fest 2023. Um, so my thinking always when I see fractions is how can I get rid of those guys? What is the number that is the smallest that can successfully cancel 77s and 10s? 77. 70 will work. It's the best we can do. It's the most efficient we can do. Uh, I know, and you know, that if I parenthesize this whole equation, monster bracket it up with a 70, that now all three division problems that I want to do will come out nice. Over and over again, the idea is cancel and then put the leftovers as a multiplier. So what is 70 canceled by 10? Seven, and then we're going to leave the seven and then parenthesize the leftovers or whatever was on top, however you want to say that. Okay, let's head over, uh, copy your plus sign down. By the way, copying this plus sign down is a really big deal because when that switches and becomes a minus sign, oof. and I'm not sure if there's any of those in the Delta tonight, I'm going to have to look. So, But when that's a minus, you're going to be really glad you copied it down, trust me. Um, what's left over in the second kill? Yeah, 70 divided by 7 is 10. And then this time he only has to multiply by five. There's no, there's no mathy stuff left over really. And then you got to do the right side. And what's left over when 70 and 70 collide? Yeah, just the X plus three. The 70s are dead, gone, out. I don't need anything where they used to be. So I just on the right side say, well, that was clean and easy. I'm just left with X plus three. 70s took each other out. Listen, if you haven't gotten the memo yet, this is all about how can I eliminate fractions so my life can be easier. All right, let's distribute. What do we get? Minus 7 plus 50. Always add those like terms. Add them up. Combine them. On the left side, how many X's will we get? Just 21, right? The 21x has no one to go with. But again, oh, sorry for the basic math. I warned you about this, that all we do all year is add and subtract numbers. Every day, all day. What's negative 7 plus 50? It has to be a positive. And it is 43. If you owe the bank $7, but you go down and deposit 50, you covered your balance or your debt with 43 to spare. And then on the right side, we have our x. Plus three. And now it's time for equation solving 101. If you're even thinking of moving the 43 or three, you either are very stubborn or you're not listening well. Who should we move, the X or the 21X? 
You agree, Brendel? Move that X. Good. So let's take that X and subtract it from both sides. Because my teacher, that wise man, said always move the smaller one. Dude knows what he's talking about. Let's get rid of the X's. Let's bring some stuff down. Zoop, how many X's are left? Copy down the plus 43. Now there's no more choices about who you want to move. This is set in stone. Who has to go? Yeah, so we're going to take away 43. You see the organization? We're just working down. Down, down, down. 20X equals, what is 3 minus 43? It's definitely negative, and it's 40. You got $3 in your account, and you go swipe your debit, debit card for 43. You now owe the bank $40. You covered three of it. They covered the other 40. And finally, we divide by 20. What's our answer? It does equal negative two. That concludes the notes. Um, so I'm going to, I guess I'll stop the recording. Make sure, let's talk the next few minutes. Make sure all of you are in Delta Math. If you're not yet, we need to, we need to go there first. Uh, so, yep. Let's do flex. Sure. How much? How much more do you have on your quiz? Because you have 11 minutes.